President Emmanuel Macron expressed concern on Friday that France's ambassador to Niger, Sylvain Eat, was effectively held hostage in the French embassy in Niamey. Macron accused the country's military rulers of blocking food deliveries to the embassy. Despite the ultimatum issued by Niger's coup leaders for Eat to leave, France refuses to comply. While Macron acknowledged the situation, he emphasized his commitment to working with President Mohamed Bazoum and refrained from immediate withdrawal. France remains engaged in discussions regarding its military presence in Niger, a once close ally in the region. Maine's power providers, Central Maine Power and Versant Power, are gearing up for the impending impact of Hurricane Lee. Anticipating challenging restoration efforts that may last for multiple days, residents are advised to stock up on essential supplies like water, food, flashlights, and batteries, preparing for potentially prolonged power outages. Crews will be dispatched once weather conditions improve, ensuring the safety of personnel during restoration operations, following wind restriction limits. Seattle police officer Daniel Otterer, who made callous remarks and laughed about the death of a graduate student struck by a police cruiser, defended his comments. He claimed his words were taken out of context during a private conversation with a colleague. Otterer's comments recorded by his body camera were in response to the incident in which Officer Kevin Dave hit and killed 23-year-old Janavi Kandula while responding to a high-priority call. Otterer said his remarks were intended as sarcasm towards lawyers discussing the case's value. The incident is under scrutiny, with more details expected. Ella Tavakolian, an Iranian dissenter, vividly recalls a police officer pointing a gun at her during a protest. The incident occurred after the death of Masa Gina Amini, triggering nationwide demonstrations against the oppressive regime. Tavakolian shielded her family, receiving a gunshot injury, narrowly avoiding harm to her children. Her injury, a common tale in Iran, highlights the ruthlessness of the regime. Seeking asylum in Milan, she reflects on the harrowing experience and the issues driving her dissent. Her North Korean leader Kim Jong-un visited a Russian military facility, inspecting nuclear-capable bombers, hypersonic missiles, and warships. Accompanied by Russia's defense minister Sergei Shaigu, Kim explored strategic bombers, including the Tu-160 and Tu-95, capable of carrying nuclear weapons. The visit raised concerns for the U.S. and South Korea fearing technology transfer to North Korea and potential military cooperation. Russia seeks to strengthen ties with North Korea amid strained relations with the West, emphasizing military potential and strategic alliances. Chinese Defense Minister Li Shangfu, missing for over two weeks, is now under investigation by Chinese authorities regarding military equipment procurement, according to sources. The probe, led by the military's Disciplinary Inspection Commission, also includes eight senior officials from the military's procurement unit that Lee previously led. The timing of the investigation coincides with Lee's recent trips to Russia, Belarus, and Africa, raising concerns about China's leadership changes during economic challenges and strained relations with the United States. The Kerala authorities have confirmed a sixth Nipah virus infection, marking a resurgence of the deadly disease after more than 18 months. Parts of Kori Code, the outbreak's epicenter, have been cordoned off as containment zones, leading to the reinstatement of COVID-era restrictions. Businesses, schools, and public areas are closed, with healthcare workers clad in PPE suits tending to the situation. The return of Nipah serves as a poignant reminder of ongoing global health challenges, hearkening back to the concerns of three years ago. A heartbreaking incident unfolded at a Bronx daycare, resulting in the tragic death of a one-year-old boy and hospitalization of three other children. Daycare staff put the children down for a nap, but some failed to wake up. First responders administered Narcan to the affected babies, with success for at least one child. The cause of this distressing event remains under investigation. The facility, Divino Nia Plus or Minus O Daycare, had recently passed inspections and had no violations, raising questions about the sudden tragedy in the newly opened daycare. Libyan officials launch an inquiry into the collapse of two dams that unleashed a catastrophic flood in Derna claiming over 11,000 lives. Torrential rains, a consequence of Mediterranean Storm Daniel, led to this disaster, overwhelming the dams and devastating the coastal city. The search for survivors and bodies continues, with more than 10,000 people still missing. Concerns rise regarding waterborne diseases and unexploded ordnance. The neglected dams' maintenance and management face scrutiny, 
highlighting the urgent need for infrastructure upkeep and disaster preparedness. The recent surge in dangerous incidents involving American Bully XL dogs prompts UK authorities to consider a ban, sparking a heated debate. Critics argue against breed-specific legislation, citing the ineffectiveness of past bans. However, proponents emphasize the urgency of action, citing a rise in fatalities linked to these dogs. The debate echoes a past battle over pit bulls, adding a layer of social and class dynamics. Amid political shifts, the government faces pressure to address public safety concerns regarding these powerful breeds.